What I find interesting about the relationship is the pure lack thereof. There's no build up to it. Absolutely none. We have all these characters that are in relationships and not one of them has any interesting kind of story or build up to how they got into a relationship. They're just kind of here. And I think the foreshadowing to this is with Sonic Choose and Roger Choose relationship. You would hear that, you know, the first thing starts off says Sonic Chu is trying to adjust his new body. That's fair enough. Could have just stopped there. He's trying to adjust his new body, so he needs to eat more. That's something that I like when Chris established. It, it makes total sense. Then he just says, I'm so lonely and so in need of a girl. And all that jazz. And oh, fuck, here we go again. So, Sonic Chu, for some strange reason, finds Kel. Kel is the trainer of the Raichu that eventually... Turned into Rosie Chu for, again for not really explained reasons, but at the same time, Sonic Chu ecology is poorly explained at best and not explained at worst. Roger Chu's there, and, you know, she sees this guy, and immediately they fall in love. Again, like I said, no build-up. After that, it's just some boring, like, awkward talk, and, you know, they kiss. This happens in the span of, I guess, maybe a few minutes, in terms of the actual comic time, not in terms of how the comic's written. Well, I guess in terms of the comic, how the comic's written, it happens in a few minutes. They are instantly in love, despite the fact that they have nothing in common, other than the fact that they're both... I guess electric hedgehog Pokemon. Again, I guess they're all the same species, and at the same time, it's treating the genders as if they're two separate entities, and that's what gets uh, gets to me. There's Sonichu and there's Rosichu. Like, I understand how you have one species, and you know, for example, there can be there's like female Pikachu and then there's male Pikachu. Sorry, off topic. Back to the unwarranted need to put his characters in relationships. This happens with pretty much. All the characters. Remember dating Ed? It, to me, it's kind of my most hated episode of the entire thing. Because it makes no sense. The idea, Chris himself even knows the idea is stupid. But he wants to do it anyway. For one thing, as I explained, and I'll explain it again, this idea is absolutely retarded. Because you can't really assume that all girls think the same. That's what this tall dating education idea even comes up with. It's assuming that all girls and all guys, for that matter, all think the same. That's the reason, that's the reason why... It would work, which it doesn't because that's not the point. Because humans are way too eclectic, way too intellectual as a species to have just one set of goals or whatever. You can't just assume someone's interest by looking at them. You have to experience with them. You have to talk to them, get to know them. That's the that's my main problem with dating. And it's such a fossilized, non-thinking, unnecessary, just padding. Because you know, even though there's a lot of antisocials and a lot of social anxieties out there I myself personally you have to understand that you yourself are the problem you can't just regulate society like that and that's what dating education was trying to do in terms of you know all the whole Christian logic like universe he created with um, Sonic Chu it's a weird sort of dichotomy that says you know this would work only because it's a class you can take a class on sexual education because you know, sex is will be this at least the same for everyone. I understand people have different kicks and different fetishes, but at the same time, the whole ground rules of reproduction will always be the same. You know, there's always a goal to reproduce, obviously. But for dating or something like that, it's completely different and completely personal. How you date and how I date are completely different, and that's where Chris just doesn't understand the whole idea of dating education. It will not work because clearly humans don't work on that kind of level. But back to the whole relationship thing in Sonic Chu. The reason why I don't like them is because Chris did so much time on pretty much nothing. They're not built up, they're not really stretched out, they're just there. They just exist because Chris feels subconscious about how his characters. Because this is the thing about Sonic Chu Chris doesn't want to needlessly contemplate the lives of his electric hedgehog Pokemon or even his own fictional self. 
It's purely a vanity, vanity project through and through. Chris doesn't want to regulate the lives because then that would think he's regulating the lives of actual people. Remember that Chris very much thinks his creations are real. So in essence, you cannot you know, overcomplicate the lives of real people. This is the reason why he puts them in needless relationships out of their own little, even out of their own context, if they have actual brains, why would they agree on something like that? There's nothing interesting about these characters that would warrant them getting into relationships. I would understand if the characters were well built up and they had a reason to be together, but they're just together only because they're together. There's no other way to see that. It's just a bland get-together thing that has no connotations. They're just, again, together. And that kind of started with Sonic Jude and Wizard Jude. All these characters get together and they don't have much in anything. Remember Black Jude? Blake? Whatever you want to call him? Remember how he's such a somewhat interesting character that had at least his own different dichotomy and how he thought kind of a rival of Sonic Jude? Not anymore. He got transformed into just another interchangeable Sonic Jude and paired it with Bubbles. He's literally now just another Sonic Jude. That's all he was.